Hitmonlee won't be on the battlefield for a long time, but it will be there for a good time. Hitmonlee has explosive power in its arsenal with a whopping base 120 attack stat and access to the unburden ability which will double its speed meaning hitmonlee does have explosive firepower right from the gate because unburden is a very very easy ability to activate in a double battle here you could put a grassy seed or psychic seed on hitmonlee and then pair it with the corresponding terrain setter partner whether that be rillaboom or indeedy getting the respective terrain up to activate the seed and now the item is consumed and that base 87 speed is now doubling if you run an adamant nature on hitmonlee you're hitting 189 attack with maximum investment right there and with your max speed investment on a neutral nature for your speed you're hitting 139 meaning when you double your speed with unburden you're hitting 278 speed which is insanely fast and if you pair hitmonlee with indeedy to get psychic terrain up well now priority moves are not coming your way to snipe down your hitmonlee because you are incredibly classy on the physical front here with 50 hp and 53 defense now the 110 special defense is a little bit weird on hitmonlee but it is nice to have so that we can potentially take <sighs> who am i kidding we're not taking much on the special front either with that 53 hp the 110 special defense is nice but we're not taking that much but anyways like i said hitmonlee is going to be on the battlefield for a short time but it's going to be there for a good time so we have explosive firepower, and Hitmonlee definitely has the moves to take advantage of that whopping base 120 attack stat. And if you wanted to get even faster and run a Jolly Nature instead, well, you could go up to 152 speed and down to 172 attack that way. But honestly, I think you can justify running an Adamant Nature on this thing. I think this is going to be insanely wild. Now, before we talk about the moves, though, let's talk about Hitmonlee's other abilities. The, uh... The dishonorable mentions, <laughs> or at least one of them is, and that is Limber. Limber protects Hitmonlee from being paralyzed, which is nice because Pranks with Thunderwave does exist, but if you have Psychic Terrain up, well, you don't have to worry about Pranks with Thunderwave to begin with, and if uh, something's getting a Thunderwave off on you, well, that that's a good way of getting around Hitmon, Hitmonlee. There's no sugarcoating that, but... The other ability that Hitmonlee does have is the Reckless ability. So basically any moves that have recoil or crash damage get a 20% boost in power. And Hitmonlee does get a few moves like that, like say high jump kick. But crash moves are insanely risky because if you miss, you take a lot of damage from them. And uh, recoil, well, Hitmonlee doesn't have the HP to really spare to go for them. So... Unburdened it is, and honestly, it's probably the best ability of the three, which is why we started off talking about it. Basically, you just consume your item, and yeah, you go from there. So, it could be really nice. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is because Hitmonlee is an unburdened Pokemon, and it's a fighting type, it will face competition in the form of Sneasler. Sneasler has unburdened, and it's honestly faster than a Hitmonlee with, with a base 120 speed stat, and it technically hits a little bit harder with a base 130 attack stat. So the question is, is why would you choose Hitmonlee over Sneasler? And honestly, 99% of the time, you're probably choosing Sneasler, but Hitmonlee does have a few things in its kit that Sneasler does not that could be interestingly supportive to benefit it. So the two Hitmonlees that I do have on my screen, I have different moves that you can interchange to run on a unburdened set. So I've, let's talk about those and then let's talk about some things that Sneasler has that, it, that Hitmonlee doesn't so as far as hitmonlee goes close combat is going to be your best friend in terms of fighting type damage you don't have you don't have to run high jump kick you have the close combat with base 120 power and 100 accuracy and honestly there's no drawback if you miss because uh you won't take the defense drop if you don't connect with the close combat so there is that and like I said, if you have Indeedee on the field with Psychic Terrain, Psychic Terrain is going to block priority moves. So Hitmonlee is going to be nice and safe. It won't have to worry about opposing Sucker Punches. It won't have to worry about Brave Bird Talonflame. 
because Braver Talonflame will have priority off of Gale Wings if the HP is full. On top of that, you don't have to worry about, say, Grassy Glide off of Opposing Rillaboom. You don't have to worry about Fake Out disrupting your momentum and breaking your Hitmonlee. So there is that. You do get access to Blaze Kick, which is some nice coverage. You can hit uh, Grass types for super effective damage. I would make a note that you can hit Steel and Ice for super effective damage, but Close Combat would also do that. But the nice thing here, too, is you do have a boosted crit ratio with Blaze Kick, so even having that little extra chance of landing a critical hit could be really nice with the blaze click the blaze kick not the blaze click um the other thing too is you do have a 10 percent chance to burn the target so that could be really nice if you luck out and get that burn hitmonlee does get access to lunge which is a means of hitting both dark types and psychic types for super effective damage and while you do hit the dark types for super effective damage with close combat being able to hit psychic type pokemon for super effective damage is going to be really nice with the lunge and if your opponent's running a bulky physical dark type pokemon lunge does have a guaranteed chance to drop the opponent's attacks at one stage so that could help keep them in line for your partner pokemon by chance especially if you don't think hip only is going to pick up the knockout or the other thing too is maybe your opponent has a dark type pokemon on the field and you think they're going to go for terra ghost and instead of clicking the close combat at least you click the lunge you lower their attack stat and then it wasn't for completely nothing so you could have that protect is here because weirdly enough hitmonlee does not get detect even though the majority of fighting type pokemon do get it according to showdown it doesn't get it at least so that's why we have protect here just to make sure that we can keep hitmonlee safe because we are running an unburdened set you don't want to take a fake out turn one so either switching in something to negate priority for hitmonlee especially if you're not uh running the psychic train like maybe you have a ferrigraph on your team instead of indeedy and you have grassy seed hitmonlee and rillaboom as your combination maybe you switch in for for a grab or you don't even have anything like that having protect there is just a good means of being able to dodge a fake out especially if an incineroar comes into the field uh now that i'm thinking about it too do you get u-turn i kind of hope you get u-turn but i don't think you do no you don't um that's unfortunate uh <laughs> Yeah, Incineroar could be a slight problem for this, too. Uh, just keep that in mind. But anyways, having Protect could be relatively nice uh, just to make sure that Hitmonlee doesn't get uh, ruined by a fake out and then just a double up. So that could be a, a, a really nice thing to have. As far as some other damaging moves go, Hitmonlee gets knockoff, which is great dark type coverage to complement its fighting type stab since you can hit ghost types for super effective damage. Knockoff will gain a 50% boost for removing a held item from the target. And on top of that, Hitmonlee gets access to Sucker Punch. This is a really nice thing here if you're not running Psychic Terrain next to your Hitmonlee. Maybe you're running Grassy Terrain instead and you're running a Grassy Seed set. Sucker Punch could be great because you could pick off a weakened target that either has priority and because Hitmonlee's unburdened would double its speed... If it's a plus one priority, the Pokemon, like if it's a tie between plus one priority, the Pokemon with the higher speed wins and Hibonlee's unburdened doubles its speed. So if your opponent has, say, a weakened Rillaboom on the field, you have your Hibonlee and you're worried about their grassy glide. Well, here's the best thing. You got the Sucker Punch. You're going to outspeed them thanks to the uh, unburdened doubling up your speed. Not a lot of Rillaboom run a whole lot of speed investment, so you're definitely going to outspeed them if you have the Unburden boost. And even if something goes horribly wrong and you lose uh, the setup to get your Unburden, at least you have a little bit of priority on Sucker Punch. Now, another thing, too, to keep uh, a note of, too, is him only also gets Fake Out, so... You could have a little bit of support right there with the fake out and then that way you could just try to disrupt your opponent now the fake out is uh super super minor just to point out but the big thing is sucker punch is a really nice move to have on hitmonlee and then that way you do have that priority and the other thing too is sneezler does not get access to either sucker punch uh blaze blaze kick or lunge so right there there's a couple of different moves that hitmonlee does get access to that could uh add a little bit of diversity to your playstyle right there that you can't necessarily recreate with sneezler now 
Another thing, too, is you could also go a more supportive role with Hitmonlee in that unburden and go for coaching to raise your partner's attack and defense. If you have Rillaboom next to this thing, great. Rillaboom definitely appreciates getting that plus one attack and defense boost, and then Rillaboom could go for a wood hammer to do some major damage. And since unburden does raise your speed so high, you could afford to run some speed investment on your own Rillaboom, and then that way you'll still be able to outspeed Rillaboom and then you might be able to catch your opponent off guard with a Rillaboom that does have some speed investment and if your opponent thinks they're being clever and switching in a different terrain setter to remove grassy terrain from Rillaboom well that Woodhammer's still coming in hot and doing some major damage like Donkey Kong's just knocking you out with that Woodhammer especially at a plus one attack stat so there is that and another bit of support that Hitmonlee gets that Sneasler doesn't is actually a wide guard so if you're worried about like say earthquake eruption uh water spout i don't know if there's any water spout pokemon that are going to be relevant in this format but either way um eruption torkoal could be scary earthquake off a lot of pokemon could be scary uh expanding force off of opposing psychic terrain like armor rouge and dd could be a thing being able to shut those down with wide guard could be really good support from hitmonlee right here and then that way you can just uh, disrupt your opponent and stop it. So that could be really, really nice. Now, alternatively, alternatively too, like I said, chances are if you're running Unburden, though, you are probably going to run Sneasler instead. And honestly, Sneasler is just really, really good. Um, so honestly, I don't want to undersell Hitmonlee, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it either. Like, Sneasler is technically the better option, but... There are definitely some good options right there with Hitmonlee. So just a few things to point out that Sneasler has that Hitmonlee doesn't is you get Acrobatics right here and Dire Claw, both of which are great moves, especially since Acrobatics just has such a nice synergy with Terra flying on Sneasler and uh, the fact that Unburden also requires Sneasler to lose its item. Acrobatics also doubles in power once the item is consumed, so... Sneasler can just do some raw damage right there of acrobatics, and then Dire Claw is just it's just RNG roulette onto whether or not you're putting your opponent to sleep, poison, or paralyzing them. So that's the big scary thing. And plus hit and plus Sneasler does have a slightly stronger close combat than Hitmonlee, since it does have that higher attack stat, and it is faster. So if you're playing Hitmonlee and you run into an opposing Sneasler and both of you have your unburden set up, um Sucker Punch could be really nice on Hitmonlee to try to deal with Sneasler. Uh, otherwise, Sneasler would give you a really bad time. But just to point out, Sneasler does have base 60 defense and 80 HP. So it is a bit on the glassy side itself. So that could be just some food for thought for if you're playing Hitmonlee and you run into an opposing Sneasler. But one thing I will point out for both of these Pokemon, especially if you want to play in a single battle format, which I don't really play singles myself, but... Unburden can still be really easy to proc for both of these Pokemon in singles, and that's because both of them get access to Fake Out, and you can run a normal gem. And if you're playing in a single battle format and you just want to have some fun with these Pokemon, you go for the Fake Out, you activate your normal gem. Normal gem is also going to boost up the power of Fake Out, which honestly, it doesn't really matter because Fake Out is so weak, but because the normal gem is now consumed, you now have your Unburden. There you go. Now you have some really good speed, but you do have to be a little bit more careful in that kind of a format because priority moves will be a little bit harder to block. So just some food for fun. Anyways, that's my main thoughts on Hitmonlee and to a lesser extent, Sneasler. Let me know what you think of both of these Pokemon down in the comments below, and I will see you there.